Who are we? What defines us as an individual? What determines the role we will play in the society we live in? Every day in the newspapers, we get to read about aggression, war, crime against women. Youngsters committing suicide, especially around the time exam results are announced. Violence in schools. In our own city, a child took a knife to school and he stabbed his teacher. Don't you find all this very disturbing? I believe that a large part of what happens in our society is a reflection of what started out within the four walls we call home. And having this realization, I started looking within my own house, within my own home environment. Twelve years ago, when I became a mother, I didn't know anything about parenting. I just followed whatever was the done thing in our culture. I was parenting on autopilot. And you won't believe what my husband did. He googled how to hold a baby. <laughs> so the first dilemma he faced as a parent was, should I hold her um, vertically or horizontally? And from that day, every day was a new question. From what diaper to buy, who what will her daughter become when she grows up? Engineer or doctor? Only if Google had all the answers. <laughs> the more I thought about how I wanted to parent, the more I realized, it kind of became clearer to me. I don't know how to put it. But you know, I am instrumental in raising a whole new generation. That my actions today will determine what tomorrow will be like. I know all of you must be wondering, I she has only two children. How does that amount to a whole generation? But think about it. What is a society made up of? It's lots and lots of families put together. And when each and every family unit works at creating a nurturing environment, then we will see communities which are built around respect, tolerance and compassion. And when people in these communities, they feel emotionally and physically safe, we will definitely, definitely see a better world. And so the core idea I want to present to you today is this, that how we parent is crucial to the future of the world. And hence we must give parenting the importance it deserves. How many of you agree with me? Put up your hands. But how did I come to this insight? I would like today to share with you some instances from my own journey as a parent. Earlier, as a mother, I thought that my children are my property. And that it was up to me to take charge of their lives and, you know, make them into what I thought was the right way to be. They were just raw material I had to mold. Then I got the opportunity of, of joining a parenting forum where I was exposed to the idea that children are not empty vessels or raw material. They are more like seeds, having the potential within them. And my role is to just honor their unique way of being and help them achieve what they want to achieve in life. Their own goals, not mine. Every idea which was discussed in the forum forced me to challenge my views of parenting. Can parents only teach their children? Or is there something that they can learn from them? If we don't teach our children to respect, or if we don't teach, uh, respect our children, how will they learn to respect others? And tell me, why can't each and every person in the family be treated equally, irrespective of their gender or their age? I'm sure you must be all confused. I can see one guy who's yawning. <laughs> you know, so many questions, my God. Too much to comprehend, but that's what I was feeling. <clears throat> my mind was churning faster than a tornado. And I had started examining each and everything I do as a parent. Whatever I believed about parenting, you know, was out there to say, what am I doing? Let me see, let me see. Let me give an example. One of my beliefs was that parents must use authority to control the children and push them in the right direction. I noticed that I was spending most of my day constantly reminding, instructing, to the extent of nagging my children about what I thought they should be doing. You have this experience of parents constantly reminding us do this, do this, do this. So I was doing the same. Nidika, pick up your toys now. I just wanted to teach her to be organized. Sachin, I'm telling you for the 200th 
134th time, do your homework. I was just trying to teach him to be responsible. See how nicely she finished her work? If you are going to be so lazy, you will turn out to be a big failure in life. I was just trying to motivate him. I had my children's best interest in mind. I wanted them to turn out to be these successful and responsible adults. Then, one day, my four-year-old son came to me and he asked, Mama, can I go and pee? I was shocked. My children couldn't do the smallest thing without consulting me. I had turned them into obedient slaves and dull their own thinking and instinct. Do you think these children are going to grow up to be the independent thinkers and decision makers of tomorrow? We can't even decide when to go and be. I started thinking what I should be doing as a parent. And then it occurred to me that democracy begins at home. What my children needed was the freedom and independence to discover things for themselves, to be able to make mistakes and learn from them just by yelling at them or name calling or even comparing them to others, I was misusing my power as a kid. I was manipulating them. Children are little people with minds and hearts of their own. They need to be treated as individuals and they deserve to be respected. It's not about power struggles, you know. Us controlling our children or our friends. children controlling us. It's all about family being a place where each person's needs are met and respected. And so, democracy begins to home. I think uh, I can give another example. One of my other beliefs which I really had to was that when children misbehave, parents must enforce consequences or punish them so that they learn. I got to a friend's place and uh, her son was getting very aggressive and hitting the other children. When the other children complained about the hitting, you know what this mother did? She spanked him. And she threatened to lock him up. At that moment, I realized that this mother is hitting her child to teach him not to hit. <laughs> Does that even make sense? I want him to learn. This is not the way to behave. She sent a genuine concern for her child. I realized that she did not know any better. She didn't know any other way. But uh, have you all ever been in this position that you were punished or hit? Just think of that time what you felt. Because what I saw on the child's face, the look of hurt on the child's face, it shook me. The tears of insecurity rolling down his eyes eased my heart. Is this how my children feel when I punish them? A child who grows up with verbal and physical violence grows up with anger and hurt. And it's just not hitting I'm talking about. The way we yell at our children, threaten them. If you don't be in yourself, no need to let. Or the way we order them around. Come on, come here fast. All this also amounts to violence. The message the children are getting is that might is right. And that we can use force, we can use power, we can use violence to get people to do what we want them to do. A child who grows up with violence will in turn use force in his environment to control his environment. You know, and this can take so many different forms, starting from bullying, to fighting, to wars on a very big scale. If we want a peaceful world tomorrow, how can we expect peace? If our interactions with our children are colored with anger and control and power and violence, if it is peace that we really want, then we must start practicing non-violence without each and every interaction with our children from today. Each and every person who interacts with children, not only parents, but teachers, caregivers, grandparents, we all must start rethinking about using what about what methods we want to use to raise our children. And really I can say this. So there are so many ways of guiding our children respectfully. And I can say this with conviction, given not only my experience as a parent, but by listening to the sharing and experiences and success stories of so many parents who we have worked with in our groups.
non-violent homes make a peaceful world. Another area where I was on shaky ground with my children was my communication. My daughter would come back from school and say, my teacher scolded me. She is so mean. And you know how I would respond? You have to respect your teacher. You can't speak about her like this. You know how difficult it is to manage a class full of children? Stop it now. Don't talk like that. Or my son would come back crying after a football match. And I would tell him, come on. Everybody can't win. He is sport, yeah. And sometimes the children would throw tantrums. Crying. And I would say, just stop it now. Okay, enough is enough. Do you think I was doing anything wrong? Don't tell me yes, because I was just trying to teach them how to face up to life. But then I overheard a conversation between my children. No use telling mommy anything. Yeah, she just doesn't understand so much. Lecture, lecture, lecture. And that made me realize that I was so busy in trying to teach my children that I was not giving importance to their feelings at all. The little things that mean so much to them, the disappointment of losing a football match, or the sadness one feels of you know, having the teachers hold you in front of all your friends. In all my struggles to do the best for my children, what I was completely missing out on was giving empathy. Empathy means putting yourself in someone else's shoes and feeling truly, truly what they must be feeling. A child who has not received empathy or understanding is not going to grow up to be a person who's going to be sensitive, caring, and compassionate. When my daughter wrote to respond to someone in distress, understand their emotions, or will she be dismissive of her emotions just like I had been hers? If only that day when she was, she came to me and told me that my teacher scolded me. I responded to her by saying, it must have been so embarrassing. Everybody must have laughed at you. If only the other day when my son was throwing a tantrum at helmet and said, what happened, Tana? You seem really upset. I guess this is the most important role we need to play as parents. That when our children come to us with feelings of sadness, anger, hurt, can we first connect with our children? Understand their feeling and not push their feelings under the carpet. What we really need to do is build their emotional quotient. Because only when they learn to manage their emotions well, will they meaningfully contribute to the society. Historian Lloyd DeMoss said, and you know who this historian was? He spent years and years studying the impact of child rearing on the society. So DeMoss said, and I quote, that every empathic act that helps a child become what he or she wants to become, every expression of love towards children, heals society and moves it in unexpected, wondrous new directions. So I'm saying democracy at home, I'm saying non-violence makes a peaceful world, and I'm saying we need empathy more than instruction. And then I come back to my original point, that the way we parent, how we parent, is crucial to the future. And therefore, we must give parenting the importance it deserves. We tell our parents that you must be nurturing towards your children. But what about the parents? Who's going to be nurturing towards them? When we as a society value parenting as an important task, then we can work towards support, training, and education of parents. What we need is parent community centers, longer maternity and paternity leaves, daycare centers at every workplace, and parent groups and spaces where parents can share and learn from each other. Imagine coming to Ishwari College for a PhD in parenting. That's where our society needs to reach, according to me. You know, I was just thinking, that the fact that a topic like parenting has been chosen to be a part of this kind of forum is testimony that society is looking for change. And believe me, parenting is not an easy task. 
Sometimes dealing with children can really be challenging and it can really bring out the worst in us. We react with authority and anger simply because we do not know any other way. Simply because we don't know what impact our present way is having on our children. But now there is a shift. More and more parents want to look at ways of dealing with their children compassionately, of raising their children with kindness, with love, understanding their feelings. In our groups, we see the joy and excitement with which parents want to share their experiences when they're being able to connect with their children, when they're being able to discipline their children without force, and threatening and bribing, when they're being able to guide their children and win their cooperation with respect. And I believe that their children will be the caring and sensitive citizens of tomorrow. When I listen to their stories, I'm filled with hope that yes, we can parent for a better future. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you.